diseases in the Bible. So God is saying the sicknesses, the diseases, the plagues that's not in the Bible, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. Then will God put upon you so that you can be destroyed. That's the judgment for sleeping around. Right. You all may not understand that? If you want to keep sleeping from woman to woman to woman, the most like God gonna jack you up. How is that jack, jack upness? STD, sexually transmitted disease. That's incurable. So God says, oh, you'll get a burning down here. You only live for 10 years. That's the curse that God says, you don't want to obey my law in marriage. Fine, I got something for you. Yeah, it's called disease. Right? So we got to say no, bro. Uh huh. I hear you. Say it again. Uh -huh. That's good for you. <laughs> right. That's what I gotta say. That's good for you. That's just judgment. <laughs> okay? That's what I gotta say. That's good. May the Lord keep it up. That's what we're saying. If you wanna go sleep around and the Lord plague you, that's good. You should keep your legs closed to one man. Matter of fact, go back to Hebrews 13. Let me show what the Bible says about that thing. Hebrews 13 and 4 again. What's this? The book of Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bail on the fight, but all mongers and adulterers, God will judge. How many hear that? Whoremongers and adulterers, God gonna do what? Gonna put a judgment on you. So you wonder why black people is plagued with STDs? That's the judgment of God. Because you want to sleep around. So the Bible says marriage is honorable, but if you decide to step out of that, you're gonna put a judgment on you. So that's why I said it's good for you. If a brother wants to sleep around and you get an STD, that's good. May right. it multiply. Right. You okay? What's the next verse now? The next verse. Let your, converse, let your conversation be without covetousness and the content with... Read it right. Take it time. Let your conversation be without covetousness. So the Bible says let your conversation be without covetousness, right? What happens in society? A brother may see another woman, she belongs to a man, and you know what you want to do? Covet that woman. So you're breaking the law on adultery now. Not only you broke fornication, now you're an adulterer. Now you're destroying a family. Woman and man married, they got kids, you're stepping into that, you're destroying a family. What does the Bible say about adultery? Give me that in Exodus 20. Exodus chapter 20. What was that, 20 and um, 14 or something like that? 13? Exodus 20 and 14, I believe. Yeah, yeah, 14. The book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. What did the Bible say? Thou shalt shall not commit adultery. What did the Bible say? Thou shalt not commit adultery. The Bible says don't commit adultery. No. What is adultery? You're married, but you want to sleep with somebody else. Right. That's adultery. Give me that in Leviticus 20 and 10. Let me explain adultery. So brother, y'all, y'all, y'all man been here for about 30 minutes. Y'all have learned so much than all your life in the Christian church and in the, in, in the mass, the Muslim mass. Okay? You have learned so much out here. Because we're giving you the Bible. This is the medicine for our people. Right. The blacks and Amerindians. You're learning that your nationality is, you're an Israelite, you're from the 12 tribes of Israel, your Messiah is black, and in order to get eternal life, you must keep the commandments. This is medicine for the community. If we teach, don't commit adultery and fornication, that's going to save broken homes. Homes are broken because we don't obey the laws of marriage. Wait, well, let me read the verse and I'm going to hear what you got to say, right? Come on. The book of Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 10. And the man that committed adultery with us. So we explain what adultery is. The Bible says the man that commits adultery. And the man that committed adultery with another man's wife. With another man's wife. That's adultery. You as a man, you want to go and sleep with another man's wife. That's what happens in black communities. We know it. It happens. We see the, the brother's wife. She looks good. We spit game to her. We tell her, oh, we got money. I guess so we're going to destroy that family. We're going to have sex with that woman. You understand that, David? Read. Even he that committed adultery. Even the man that committed the adultery. With his neighbor's wife, the adulterer. The adulterer, which is the man. And the adulteress. And the adulteress, which is the woman. Shall surely be put to death. What did God say? Shall surely be put to death. So what is the judgment for adultery? Death. What is the judgment for fornication? Death. Right. You don't get the kingdom like that. What do you have to say, bro? You had a question or something? Nobody wants to judge, though. You have to ask your ass. That's why you're here. 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 That's
I got cake chicken. No, that's why I'm not sure which of these less, which of them is the right one. Okay. You got these kind of things. Really, let's speak about it. I always feel like I do a bit more fun around the watching. That's what you're saying, yeah. Otherwise, yeah. you're really going to find it down to the center of the country. Contrary. Okay, well, this Bible that the brother has, you have the cover or it's gone? <laughs> this Bible is the whole the Holy Bible containing the Old Testament authorized King James Version. So what we read is the King James Version. Yeah, the reason why the Bible that we read is sounds strange to our people. It's because the things that we're bringing out are not being taught in the Christian church. So that's why people say, people say, what book you are reading? What type of Bible is this? Can I get one like this? This is the same Bible in the Christian church. Right. Exactly. The problem is, the Bible is a good book, but don't let a liar teach it to you. Don't let a false prophet teach it to you. Which is the Christian pastors. So y'all men got to come out of the Christian church. Okay? You understand that? So the Bible says what? Marriage is honorable between a man and a woman. So what you got to do, bro? Give your marriage a Christian church, right? Don't worry. Well, what makes a marriage valid is you having paperwork. You must have paperwork involved. So it doesn't matter church. No, I mean, you're in ignorance. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. But according to the Bible, you're about to do it. Guidance? Yeah. Alright, give me that in um Tobit. Tobit 7 and um what 15? Alright, let me share it with you. Let me give you some guidance real quick, bro. David, you do with any women? You got a girlfriend, bro? Be honest. So you gotta make that thing right. You got some too? You ain't married yet, right? You gotta make that thing right. So this is for you too, David. David and Colin, right? David and Colin, this is for y'all. This is medicine for y'all. You understand? You gotta make this thing right, bro. Cause guess what? You don't want your son. You got your children as yet. You don't want your son growing up thinking this is how a family should be. Oh, look at daddy. He or not mommy. He ain't married she. But they're together for 10, 15 years. He gonna grow up thinking that's that's marriage. That's a life. That's a family. You understand that? And if you get a daughter, she gonna think, oh, I could give it up to the man anyhow. He ain't gotta marry me. So they are women. They don't marry with their virginity. When you read the Old Testament, when a woman marries, right? And they don't bleed on that wedding night, they were stoned to death. I'm telling you, marriage is very serious. Yeah, but in today's society, as soon as the woman could speak, virginity gone by some stupid nigger in the street. You know what I'm saying to you? We got to stop that lewd behavior. Yeah, Tobit 7 and uh, 14. Check this out. This is the book of Tobit, chapter 7 and verse 14. And called Edna his wife, and took paper, and did write an instrument of covenant, and sealed it. So he, the brother called uh, Edna's wife and took paperwork, instrument of covenant, you know what we call that today? Marriage certificate. That's what that's called. He did paperwork, he signed and sealed it. So according to the laws of the land and according to the Bible, you are now married. Because paperwork is involved. Yes. Having sex with a woman, that don't make, make her your wife. Until you get paperwork involved, then that's your wife. You understand that? And what's preventing the man from doing that? You know why young men want to do that get married? Because you love the lifestyle you're living in. You want to change. You like that thing. Because if someone you're married, you're tied down. You got a responsibility now. You know you're to one woman. But when you're married, you could always take a side piece. But you don't get judged. Now you saying you specifically. Don't get me. Now you saying you specifically, right? I'm speaking in general why a lot of our men don't get married. But they sleep around. They've been a woman for 15, 20 years. Why y'all ain't married, bro? Well, you know what? Um, 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 I like the way we live in, man. Marriage is, they like that thing. They like that sin. You know what I'm saying? Read again for me. And called Edna his wife, and took paper, and did write an instrument of covenant, and sealed it. So to officialize the marriage, you must have paperwork involved. You must have paperwork, write and seal it. So marriage is only between what? Man and woman. 1 Corinthians 7 and 2. How do you mean, my sister? We bring out identity according to the Bible. That the black people in Guyana, they're the biblical Israelites. And when you hear about Jesus Christ, he's a black man according to the Bible. Right. But right now, we're also talking about marriage. Because in the black community, marriage is not honored. You, the statistics on marriage is very low. But the statistics on single parent household and women with children is very high. That's the problem. That's reverse. 1 Corinthians 7 and 2. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 2. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, the Bible says, nevertheless, to avoid fornication. What's fornication, my brother David? What's fornication? What is fornication? Huh? I said, yeah, but what type of act? What act is that? Huh? 
Where's the act of fornication? We just went over it. What did the sister say? Sex with another man and sex outside of marriage, right? So God says to avoid having sex before you get married, do what? Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. God says, you know what? Get married. To avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. Get married. That's what the Bible is saying. What's so hard about that? Get married to avoid fornication and sleeping around. Stick to one man and stop having your sons and daughters having boyfriend and girlfriends. You understand that, Colin? Boyfriend and girlfriend is not according to the Bible. Marriages. Come on. And let every woman have her own husband. So the Bible says, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. Give me Leviticus 19 now. Leviticus 19 and 29. And then Deuteronomy 23 and 17. So, a lot, of, a lot of times in society, parents, you know what they do? They allow their young daughters to have boyfriends. And then the daughter comes home pregnant, and mommy's already a grandmother. She's young, and she's already a grandmother. You know what she says? Oh, I could marry the child and the daughter, and you can bring the boy over to me. That's, that's madness. You can, your daughter gets pregnant, and she's still inside your house. That's a defiled woman. You understand that? You're supposed to get pregnant inside your parents' house. And you as a man is supposed to bake no one belly and you still in your parents' house. That's a shame. You're ready. You're a boy. You ain't a man. Read the Bible. The book of Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 29. Do not prostitute thy daughter. God says, don't prostitute your daughter. Don't prostitute your daughter or your son. How do you prostitute your daughters and sons? By doing what? To cause her to be a whore. So don't prostitute your daughter to cause her to be a sex object. How do you make your daughter appear as though she's a sex object? We talking about the family right now. You. How do you make your daughter appear as though she's a sex object? How does parents do that? How do parents do that? Make their children appear as sex objects. Uh, I ain't like that. Let me hear you call it. It's easy, very easy. What do parents, by the what? By the clothes that they wear. A lot of parents they have their daughters in mini skirts, short pants. Now picture brother, you've been in jail for 30 years. You go into jail and the first thing you see is that young daughter, by herself, something revealing. What's gonna come to your mind as a man? Let me grab that woman up and rape her. So you're creating more problems and havoc in the community. You understand that? And that's what happens when parents allow their daughters to dress in yo. They leave those and say, oh, you look good. What? You don't look good, sister. Your underwear printing, your, your legs out, your breasts out. And parents give the okay to that thing. So what does the law say? The law. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission, minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.